Hi there, my name's Chloe and I'm an artist who makes live art. For me, live art is just like any other medium, like sculpture, painting, installation, video, and artists choose to use it for the same reason they would any other medium, because it allows them to explore something they otherwise wouldn't be able to. So if you wanted to explore texture, you might use um, paint or sculpture. If you wanted to explore perspective, you might use installation or drawing. But what is it that you can explore with live art? Well, I've asked a couple of people to help us find out. Hello, uh, my name is Janie Price and I am a professional musician, but I'm also an artist and I have a degree in surface design. Uh, I'm particularly interested in live art because I'm always looking to explore the ways in which I can express music and visual art uh, together and I think that live art offers a lot of possibilities for that uh, because for me it's more about presence and having an experience than it is about the end product. Fantastic, so there we've already learnt that live art can be used to explore presence, experience and process. Instead of an artist making a piece of work somewhere at some time and then going somewhere completely different in a completely different time to show the work, um, live art allows the artist and the audience to be present at the same time in the point of production. Therefore, instead of simply viewing it, the audience um, experiences the work through this engagement with the present artist. And this lived experience is at once both the process and product of the work. There's often no tangible object made at the end that is the work. It's this experience and the effect of this experience on the audience and on the artist that creates the piece of work. A work that illustrates this idea of presence and experience is Michael Pinchbeck's The Long and Winding Road. So you walk up to the car and you get in. When you get in there, there's a man in the driving seat, I guess the artist, who introduces the work. Welcome aboard. This is the long winding road. And offers you a travel suite. Um, when I did this, I took a suite. This is video documentation, so no one takes a suite here. I bet, I can't remember, but I bet I went for a grapefruit one because it was always my favourite when my gran used to give them me on car journeys to stop me feeling sick. As I sit here, I kind of think, oh my goodness, I kind of fancy the artist a bit, which reminds me of riding around in people's cars when I was 17, you know, sitting in a car, sucking on a suite, kind of fancying people a bit. So already this experience is really affecting me in terms of connecting with my own history. And in this way, it's becoming more and more relevant to me in my life. Um, the artist is looking at me and speaking through the rear view mirror, which you can't really grasp on this documentation, but you do really feel this sense of obligation to engage with what he's saying. And what he's saying is really sad. He's talking about when his brother, Robert, died when he was 21 and he had to go and collect his stuff, um, which is all in the back of the car, wrapped up in brown paper. The presence of the artist and the experience of being sat in his car with him and his brother's stuff is incredibly powerful and works really well to communicate these ideas of memory and loss. Let's move on. Hi, I'm David Blandy and I'm an artist, I guess. I use live work, really it's the basis of all my work. It's that idea of taking something that exists in the world and transforming it through my body, through myself, my experience of that thing becomes um, the start of the artwork. I'm interested in what makes me me, what makes me who I am today. That kind of thing of inhabiting an element of the world is what's at the core of my practice. So what David said here um, demonstrates another potential of live art this ability to use your body to test the construction of identities and realities in one of the most direct ways you can through, you know, using your body. 
My name is Jay Samia Molu and I'm a curator or a student at the Royal College of Art. Having that sort of bodily presence, that sort of person that's, sort of, that's working through in a very active manner um, issues that are pertinent to everyone, I think um, performance art can be very powerful in that way. Excellent, so let's have a look at this work now, Eccentris, shown at Tate Modern in 2003 for some serious bodily presence working through issues of identity. Wicked, so you can see the gallery is full of all these people and these people on plinths uh, kind of like performing these peculiar personas and the audience responding to them or just watching them. But I really like the bits when they ask the audience to either interact by joining the dioramas. Yes. Or by um, sort of directing it and and um, showing them which way they should go, like this bloke does here. We missing some like direct references to the political sphere, or are we missing sexual tension, high aesthetics? What are we missing here? Is there anyone willing to co-create with me this yes. image? Yes, come. What are we missing? What would you like to see? I'd like to see more of the Aztec imagery because it's got a strong visual element in it and I think you could take the visual element even further. I guess a performance doesn't necessarily have to be, be a, a finite and very defined um, entity. It can be something that evolves and that is part of this idea of research and process. Yes, indeed. So Chris Ophelia, Turner Prize winner, very famous painter, in 1993 went down to Brick Lane, um, put some elephant dung out on some fabric on the floor and just stood there just to see what would happen. And this is what happened. They'd look at me, they'd look at the shit, they'd look at me. Then it would get to them. So it was a cycle of looking in which they put me together with the shit and created an image from those two. I don't think he could have got that result or investigated that at all um, without using live art. So there we go, there's a great painter using live art in his practice as part of his process and as part of identifying um, what the audience is going to feel when they see his paintings. Okay, brilliant. So that's all I've got to say. Um, yeah, try some live art in your practice. It could uh, really get you going somewhere, somewhere new or just... Uh, help out on what you're trying to do at the moment. Brilliant, I hope it's been useful, cheers.